Brentford's groundbreaking Moneyball approach has been a standout success story over the last decade. But as Premier League pressures mount, could the bees be transforming from money ball into a money pit? I know I can't swear, but what the... <laughs> In this video, we'll explore Brentford's financial journey and how their data-driven strategy has led to Premier League profits. We'll also examine the challenges encountered by other promoted teams like Leicester City and Wolves. And from that, we'll fast forward to see how the combination of declining on-field performance and escalating costs could potentially push Brentford into financial uncertainty. Right now, I just want to get so drunk tonight. <laughs> But before we forecast the potential challenges facing Brentford, let's first look at the rewards Brentford have reaped from reaching the Premier League. Just how much revenue has promotion delivered? Brentford's top liners skyrocketed as they climbed from League One to the Premier League, going from under 5 million in 2014 to their best ever performance in 2023, raking in 167 million. And whilst across the Premier League, that result was one of the smallest, Last year's revenue was an astounding 37 times greater than the start of this decade. So, what's fueled this massive growth? Let's dive into the revenue streams. Unsurprisingly, Premier League broadcast revenues was the main driving force. The Bees brought in 135 million, an 18% increase on the year before, thanks to their first top half finish. Following that with match day revenues, also a personal best at 11 million, with post COVID attendances surging past 17,000 in 2023. And finally, commercial revenues also on the up at 19 million, boosted by major deals with Umbro, Hollywood Bets, and GTech. There's no doubt that Premier League football has been transformational for Brentford's finances, but what does 2024 hold? On the pitch, we know this season was a greater struggle for Brentford, dropping seven places to 16. Based on reported Premier League distributions, that could see broadcasting revenues fall to 115 million, a 20 million pound drop. When it comes to matchday revenues, average attendances remained flat, and with a similar number of games played and a freeze in season ticket prices, it's unlikely surpassing the 11 million made the year before. Finally, commercial revenues. Whilst details are sparse, Brentford did seal an enhanced deal with Pension B, and with a range of new commercial partnerships, let's be optimistic and raise this by 2 million. Adding it all up, we're looking at a potential revenue of 149 million. That's an 18 million fall from 2023's peak. Are these the first signs of financial headwinds for Brentford, or do the bees have options to mitigate this drop? To find out, let's look at the bottom line. Unlike many clubs, Brentford's promotion to the Premier League has also transformed their profit picture. From losses in all years but one, their two top flight seasons have been firmly in the black. In fact, despite one of the smallest revenues in the league, Brentford delivered the third best bottom line in 2023. An impressive feat, but can it last? To answer that, let's step into our PL walkthrough. Let's start the timer, grey out the revenue, and dive into staff costs. Wages have matched the rise in revenue, going from 10 million in 2014 to almost 100 in 2023. But as a proportion of revenue, the Premier League years look in control, with 2023 under 60% of that increased top line. A far cry from COVID impacted 2021, where this had soared to 270. But how did this translate onto points on the pitch? Whilst undoubtedly points come at a higher premium in the Premier League, Brentford's 2023 performance was best in class. They picked up 49 points at under 2 million apiece in wages, by far the best return in the league. And after staff costs alone, the divide between divisions is already clear. Next up, operating costs. These again have stepped up as Brentford ascended to the Prem, reaching 25 million. Further details of this increase aren't forthcoming, but at EBITDA level, the Premier League is evidently the place to be. Third, stadium and facilities. These costs have risen gradually to 7 million as the club invests in their new stadium and facilities. The exception, 30 million of net income in 2019, where Brentford revalued old home Griffin Park, banking a 17 million pound profit ahead of its transfer to developers in September 2020. And finally, that brings us to transfer fees. Outside the Premier League, Brentford's player development model generated profits in all seasons but one, fueled by big ticket sales of Ollie Watkins, Side Ben Rama, and Neil Mope. But Premier League football has required heavy player investment, 
flipping this to a 25 million pound cost in 2023. Thanks to the influx of Keen Lewis Potter, Mikkel Damsgaard and Aaron Hickey amongst others. Those increasing transfer costs are part of the concern for Brentford's long-term profitability. So we've understood the story up to 2023, but what could 2024's bottom line really look like? Starting with 2023's 10 million of operating profit, we first reverse out last year's profit from player sales of 5.5 million. We'll add in this year's sales shortly. We've already seen that revenue could take an 18 million hit. On top of that, we have to consider transfer activity in and out. Brentford have stepped up their squad investment, twice breaking the club record with the additions of Kevin Sharder and Nathan Collins. Add in Mark Flecken and the loan signings of Sergio Reguilon and Neil Mope, these heavy investments could add over 21 million to the cost based in wages and transfer fee costs. But what about players out? The major sales were Mads Bidstrup and David Rea on an initial loan to Arsenal. Assuming they don't bank the permanent transfer to the 2025 season, that means just 8 million of transfer income brought in. In the absence of any other cost savings or income, that would drop Brentford to a 27 million operating loss, the heaviest of the decade. But Brentford isn't alone in this trend. Our previous analysis of promoted teams showed clubs often delivered healthy profit margins in their first year in the top flight. But by year four, these have been squeezed dramatically. Of the clubs investigated, only Brighton has managed to turn sustained investment into long-term profits and on-field success. And even then, it took five years to see returns. Can Brentford beat the odds and emulate this? It's certainly possible. They've shown with the Raya sale that they can showcase top-level players in the Premier League whilst preserving their own top-flight status. But as the prices for new arrivals soar, the risks of failing to develop top Premier League caliber players also increase. Do Brentford have the cash flows to fund this new challenge? As always, we're looking at the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, driven by EBIT dial line items, matches the profit picture we've just seen. Cash flowed out of Brentford as they rose to the Premier League, but in the top flight, the GTEC has become a cash cow. Generating over 100 million in the Premier League years mean Brentford actually brought in 9 million of cash over the decade. Now back to transfer fees, the script flips almost perfectly. Transfer cash flowed in steadily in the championship, but that player investment in the Prem means 29 million of transfer cash has left the GTEC. Add those together and that transfer spend means Brentford has spent 20 million across this 10 year spell. So how much funding has been required? Financing has undulated over the 10 years, reaching its peak during COVID. Since promotion, the club has in fact paid down loans, reducing the total funding over the decade to 78 million. And with reports earlier in the year that owner Matthew Benham could be looking to sell either a minority or controlling stake in the bees, are fresh eyes and deeper pockets needed at the GTEC to fulfill the bigger plans for Brentford. As we mentioned earlier, Brighton may have the blueprint for teams looking to level up in the Premier League. So if you want to find out how they did it, you can check out this video here. And with that, we're out.